you probably have heard about the 3D program called Blender. And you said, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna learn about it someday because it might be really helpful. It might uh, be really helpful in my cinematography journey. And you never got past the first part of the donut tutorial. Yeah, sound familiar? Um, we can pre-light with Blender, of course, um, but you might say, hey dude, there's a, a, a program called um, Satellite 3D and it's so much easier and so much better and blah 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 accurate. I would agree with you on every point that you have said there and I do think pre uh, Satellite 3D is a better program for pre-lighting. But in Blender you can do a little bit more and those little stuff might go a long way. That means you can understand and cre recreate um, accurate sunlight and you can you know, create custom sets and stuff yeah custom sets we're not gonna go into that but you know we might go uh, to that point in another video but we're gonna focus on creating and understanding sunlight um, this is not going to be a comparison between satellite and blender because I do believe that they're really great softwares and they're very capable for, for you know what they're made for because they're made for very different stuff we will use blender today just to understand and recreate real sunlight in a given space if you don't have access to location or you just need inspiration or you just want to learn how you know light in a space works this will be great you don't need to be a pro to understand any of this if you're familiar with satellite 3d you're gonna be okay with this one we're just gonna make everything out of cubes you don't need to make stuff complicated you don't need to you know all that fancy materials and everything like that we just want to do the basics and we just want to understand how light in a space could actually work i have to add one more thing before we start um i am i was an architect i studied architecture in university i um, worked as an architect for two years and now for the past year and a half i've been working as a 3d artist during the day it's my day job so i'm very familiar with lighting spaces and you know understanding spaces and you know 3d spaces and I'm also very familiar with 3D programs, but this video will not be anything for like pros and anything like that. Again, we might get to them. It is very useful when you're, when you're um, creating a scene, even if you're not doing the production design, it's very useful to understand and know this. It is not necessary though, but again, we might get to them at another stage um, in another video. All right, let's get to this. All right, so this is Blender. We open Blender. I'm gonna go over everything very quickly. I'm just gonna go create a general one. We have a lot of stuff here. I'm just gonna delete this with X. Um, so this is the default cube. This is good. We can use this totally to do our stuff. Um, I'm gonna give the dimensions to it. I know that my room was about three meters long and then I had about a, um, I'm just gonna, I think it's six meters something and we were at three meters um, height I'm just going to make this 1.5 meters here so that it sits on the zero um, you don't have to make the same room like you don't have to adhere by real-world adjustments Like you don't have to have the hundred percent right uh, measurements it's fine if you miss a couple of centimeters the meter it's again just to this is just to give us a sense of the light. I'm gonna tab and I'm going to go Command or Control R in Windows. And I'm just going to add my windows here. I'm guessing that they were around there since I know the room. And they were around um, maybe like this height. Going to add my door also in here, which is, yeah, probably let's say something like that. I'm going to add another command R and then make my windows there and then my doors with doors height would be here. I'm just going to go three and then select these with command. I'm just going to delete this one. Actually, this is faces. So this would be our door there. And as I turn around, I'm just going to go to my um, windows and then again delete the windows i'm going to make another cube here it's a rooftop apartment which means that we have some roof angles uh, and i'm going to create this i'm going to do that by pressing r and then and then y again so it just rotates in the y axis going to make it a bit um bigger maybe something like this and then move it i'm going to shift d and then 
x i'm sorry y to duplicate it in the y direction so it would be around there i believe this would be my room and i would have to have a couch there um, i'm gonna add another one so this is obviously not the exact room but it is um, somewhat of a similar room then at least so i would say this is okay for the demonstration process so what we can do is i can actually add my camera in here if i want to you can also say you don't want to add the camera but let's say we just want to add the camera i'm going to shift a again and then add camera in here i'm just going to with g place it to where it was which was around here and we can go into our camera view like this so i can angle my camera in this position maybe something like this yeah go to something like that okay so we can go to our camera this is the camera data and let's say again demonstration purposes let's say we're at 16 millimeters um we can make our camera go a little higher with the transform the location transform in here zoom in just a little bit and then say okay let's just make it a solid view so this is what our camera sees right now and we can say okay let's take a look at something like that but again this will not matter a lot in the whole process of things now i will show you one um, setting normally i don't want you know you know want to go through the settings but in this one the settings will be important when we want to go take a look at the um, uh, real-time rendering which is going to be in the render part ev is totally okay we can stay there doesn't matter um, and the other stuff, you know, it's fine. In the film one, it's also fine. Like, we don't have to do anything ray tracing. You don't need that. You don't need cycles. Cycles is a different workflow than EV, but for our purposes, EV is completely fine. Um, we can recreate sun with two methods. One is having an HDRI map, which is a, a real location shot on a real time with different um, stops of light and then it recreates that as a dome light let's say there are a lot of free hdri maps on the web one thing that i found was this one this is from polyhaven i will link it to you too this is again for free I'm just gonna go to blender again I'm gonna go to the world tab then you can see here there's this color thing i'm gonna go to color to environment texture I'm just going to open my environment texture, which is in my downloads here. Good. We can go Z and then rendered view here. And now something happens again, as you can see, there's sun, but you're also seeing the HDRI. If you don't want to see that, we can go to our, our scene and then say transparent. And then you now have a real sun uh, in this location. It would look something like this in this location. You can go independent from the camera and then it would look like this now there's a couple of notes here which are really important these hdris are all um, made in specific locations in the world at specific times so this is probably like i'm thinking probably like 2 3 p.m uh, or like 10 11 a.m this means that the sun comes in a very specific angle if you want to change this you have to go to the shading editor which i'm going to show you now you can always go and search in polyhaven for hdris that are sunrise sunset there's a lot of stuff in this one so you can you can go crazy on this you can search for anything but if you don't want to do that if you don't want to have a lot of like hdris and stuff or you just want to do quick stuff we can also do it like this i'm going to go to our window i'm going to open a new window here we can go to our shader editor and then say world okay you can follow hopefully i'm going to add another node with shift a and this is going to be texture coordinate and then shift a again and i'm going to add a mapping node and then it's going to go generate it to vector because this is a vector and then vector to vector okay so we can just put it around here and then now i can play with the rotation of the sun as you can see changes it changes the views changes how the sun comes now now if you know where north west east south is you know where sun sets where sun rises and stuff like that and you can you know play with a lot of stuff let's just go to our camera view and then like this since i know this location i know how it works i can say that sun would hit my location at 10 a.m 
in the morning, something like this. The experiment that we have done was supposed to recreate a golden hour look. Now, we can do this with uh, finding another HDRI or we can do it with this HDRI and then I can say, okay, I know how the, that was. Let's just take it to zero, zero, zero again. As I can see, sun is coming from here. We want the sun to be coming from there. So I'm just gonna rotate the whole thing, Y axis. And then yes, the sun was supposed to come in from something like that. Maybe something like this. So this was literally how the sun was coming in. Now there are a couple of things that we have to take take a look at here. First of all, we can analyze this, you know? So that's, that's pretty good. We can take a look at it and analyze it. You might think, wow, this doesn't look real realistic, but you also have to think that we don't have any materials or anything like that. And again, this gives us a very good starting point on how the sun actually works. Um, there's also another way. Go here and remove and go to our uh, solid view again. We can also add a sunlight inside Blender. The thing about this is why I did not want to do this is with HDRIs, you're getting sometimes less control, but more realistic angles and more realistic locations of the sun. Again, this doesn't mean that you can't get that with the sunlight. You can, but this might actually need a little bit more information on the whole thing than the HDRIs, because again, HDRIs can be set to specific times and it could be like 6 p.m. sun and 10 p.m. sun, blue hour sun, whatever, whatnot. So that could be really useful. But for this one, Let's say, okay, so this is our sun. Let's just go to our rendered view. We can go to our sun and then let's say this angle is like kind of like a spotlight. Think of like a spotlight. 180 degrees is like, think of it like a cob light that is open with no modifiers. So as zero would be a spotlight at like a hundred percent like spotlight. And then you can, you can just open it up and close it down. And let's just say 36 degrees, like a spotlight. Um, we can change the color again. We can make it a bit more golden make it even like weird ass colors it doesn't really matter we can rotate the sun i would suggest that you do the rotation here because i think it's a lot easier and i'm just going to try to get that golden hour sun into this one again sun will be coming in like this again so this looks around about right again i can see how the sunlight would come in here i think this is a good starting point for another example, let's make my living room scene. So I have built this already and go to my camera. So this is an eight millimeter, I guess, camera, which just looks at my living room, okay? At this point, I can go again to my rendered view. And this is with the same HDRI that we have set up. Now I can go to my material editor and then um, play with it. But this actually, I can also tell you actually how sun hits my apartment at around 4 to 5 p.m. Now I can see, okay, so this is cool. So this is how I understand the sunlight actually works in my own place. See, this is a very, very easy way of understanding how light could work in a space. This with very minimal work gives me a really good idea on what the space can actually look like with the sun there. This is not a finished pre-light plan. Yes, now we can take this screenshot. This is not rendered again. We can take the screenshot to Satellite 3D and then we can say, okay, so this is my inspiration. This is how this should look in real life. Then, then I would, okay, add my 1200 there or like the sky panels there or like the 600D there and blah, 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 whatnot. This is a tool for understanding this light. All right, I blabbed a lot again. I know um, this might have, this might seem very complicated, you know, the whole thing with HDRI and then the materials and stuff like that. But again, these programs are not easy programs. I get it. Even understand the base, understanding the basics of it will really change your cinematography and journey in a very positive level. And you might be a DP of 10 years and 30 years and you might say, yeah, I don't really need this. I know how light works in the space. I would totally understand that, but I will also encourage you to try this out. But this, I think, will open a whole new road for you when you're, when you're trying to understand, like when you're trying to light scenes, because again, this will be very, very 
useful and I have blabbered on too much, but you know what I mean. And I'll see you next week in the set a light video. So see you in the next one.